Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's virtual bridge session. And it's going to be on uh, three things to try this Thursday. How intriguing, and I don't even know what those three things are. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing about them, and we'll be hearing about them from Kenji Lam of College Development Network. Over to Kenji. Thanks, Jason. Um, so, yes, originally it was going to be three things to try this Tuesday. Um, <laughs> and I, literally, I just spent all the time trying to think of an alliteration using the letter T for, for the title and make it as long as possible. And, and then I couldn't do the Tuesday thing. So fortunately, I was able to switch to Thursday and, and still keep the t -t 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 <laughs> uh, name of the, the whole presentation. So that's totally made my day. Um, right, so today, um, what we're going to talk about is basically three tools that I've come across that I think are very relevant to the ability to teach from a distance. Um, these are three tools, uh, some of which have just come on the scene in the last month or so. Um, and they're, they're very new, but they give an insight into what potentially is possible, what people are looking for in this kind of situation, solving a few of the problems and issues that people are encountering. So um, there are three tools. Uh, I have, I, I assume, roughly about seven minutes to go through each, uh, which is absolutely not enough time for somebody like me um, who rambles on. So uh, I'll just fire into it and, and we'll see where we go. Right. So to begin with, I am going to share my screen. Um, what have I left on my desktop? That's the question. Uh, <laughs> oh, right, nothing, awesome. Right, so browser, oh, there's another danger. Oh, okay, so, oh, today. So the three things I want to look at, the first one is a kind of presentation help tool. The second thing I want to look at is a bit of assessment, self-assessment really. And the last thing is an absolutely awesome tool that was uh, designed by a maths teacher who is clearly a genius. Um, Right, so when we'd started the virtual bridge sessions, the first session that we had delivered was on the topic of PowerPoint um, and the ability to use PowerPoint to record and deliver a presentation using uh, the recording tools, uh, which are up here. So you could, you could uh, record what was happening on your desktop, create an MP4 video, uh, or you, you could use your slides. In fact, uh, I have, here's one that I made earlier. You could use your slides uh, deliver just a typical presentation. Um, and if you wanted to record a video of you, you could narrate the slides, save it as an MP4, give it out to your students. Now, one of the things that I discovered with this though, is that people for some reason do not want to record their own voice uh, over the slides. Now, I, I still think it's really important to make a personal connection with your students. So I would always advise showing your face, um, speaking, uh, and talking to your students because people like that personal connection. But, okay, I understand, not really, I understand why you might not want to listen to your own voice. It's the reason I became a teacher. Um, why wouldn't you? But some people might want to use, uh, well, another person to perhaps read uh, <laughs> the, the narration for, for slides. Now, as other people are sometimes hard to find, especially if you're locked in your house, the next step is to go and look for an automated issue or an automated solution. So what would be ideal is if you could get the computer to read out the things you wanted to say over your slides. Not ideal, but you know, some people want to. So there is a tool that's recently come up that allows you to take a standard PowerPoint slide. And so for every slide that you have, you might have some text that you write into the notes. Uh, this tool lists that text and reads essentially that text uh, over the slide and puts it all out as a video. Um, and this tool is completely free uh, and it recently came on the scene um, and I've been playing around with it and it's pretty good. So let me show you it now. Uh, it's a tool called, uh, interestingly enough, Video Puppet. Uh, video Puppet, uh, which is just videopuppet.com, allows anyone to create a video from their slides. Now you can create it using your own voice and narrate over it, but what it will allow you to do is it will take the, the notes that you've written into each slide and produce a video with a voiceover, with an automated AI a voice, well, AI voice, a voice reading um, text to speech. So the interesting thing is it's a new service, it's in beta. So where is it going to go in the future? I don't know. Um, but it's interesting to play around with just now. 
Now, it has two options. One is you can go in and you can create a video now from a presentation straight off without logging into the service, which is stunning. Like it's, there's, there's no cost. You don't need to log in. You just need to produce what you do. Now, when, when you do that, you, you go to presentation um, and it just asks you to upload a file. Now, the limitation is that you can only upload up to a 10 megabyte file and it will only take up to 20 slides. If you go through the free registration process, I think it does like a 100 megabytes and 100 slides or something. It, it, it gives you a vastly more. But the thing is, if you're delivering a presentation to your students, you know, if you're delivering 100 slides, something has gone seriously wrong in that recording. Uh, I, I would, <laughs> I'd, I'd feel for your students. So in, in this case, what you're looking for is um, relatively compact sort of presentation um, and to see what it comes up like. So uh, if I, I haven't logged in, I do have a login for this. Um, you're uploading a PowerPoint uh, file. So either the old uh, formats of pre-2010 or PPTX, which is the current sort of file. It, it says you should use embedded fonts. Um, that's a way of when you save your presentation, you have an option to save fonts so that the fonts that you use, if they're particularly fancy, uh, might not be included in the default set that comes with uh, PowerPoint. And, and when the service then sort of messes up the font. But I'll assume that you know how to do that or I'll add some notes later on. So uh, if I upload a file, so let's see, on my desktop, I have the slides that I was showing you earlier. So it takes the slides and then it asks you for some options as to which voice uh, do you want to use? So, oh, that was quick. Uh, let's see, uh, edit the settings. So uh, the size, same as presentation. So it's just a full screen size, language. You can choose, interestingly enough, uh, a number of languages and accents as well, if you want to go slightly different. Um, a number of voices. Who shall I be today? Who shall I be, John? Who should I be? What? what mm -hmm. I, I can't read them. Uh, I think too small. <laughs> so, oh, oh it, in, in that case, Vivian, I'm going to have to uh, ask you. Can uh, you see? be Elizabeth today. Elizabeth, right. Yeah. I've always, secretly, deeply, I, I've, al I've always wanted to be an Elizabeth. Yes. That's great then. Um, that's, that's working out well. <laughs> my parents thought I was going to be a girl and they'd only chosen a girl's name uh, for me right. when I was born. They hadn't even chosen a male name. So uh, my, my name, I was going to be called Mariko. That, that was going to be, anyway, it's a long story. It's interesting, but it's long. Uh, speed, normal, right. Uh, music, oh yeah, you, you get kind of background music. It's, it's all very video-y. Um, you, you get a bunch of things that you can listen to. But anyway, uh, subtitles, interestingly enough, it will lift all of your note text and display them as overlay subtitles if you want. But if you're putting onto YouTube, you, you'll get that functionality anyway. But if you want to embed the subtitles wholly on as part of the video, you can't turn them off, It'll, they'll be fixed there. Um, you can use that uh, set if you wish. Um, shall I do that? No, okay, let's, let's, let's just go with that. Now, it takes a few minutes um, to create the video. So what I'm going to do is move on to the next tool uh, while that's creating it. For, for me, it will depend on the number of slides you use and the amount of text that you put into those videos and the number of graphics. But it is, it comes out with a pretty good result. Um, but let's, let's leave that for now. Um, moving on, I said we'd talk about assessment. So this is a self-assessment tool, which I, I kind of like. It's, it's nice. I don't know if any of you have come across it before. Um, certainly the concept is, is interesting. Basically, it uses a bit of artificial intelligence to create an assessment from any piece of text that you might have. It's, it's very simple, similar to a number of tools that have been created recently. There's kind of rapid content generation tools. There's, there's a, a startup uh, that was involved with Donald Clark, I think here in Scotland. I'm going to call it wildfire, wild something, I don't know. Um, but their idea was that you could take any piece of content, upload it into their system, and it would spit out an entire sort of course for you, built in with assessment, asking you pertinent questions about the, the important content in a piece of text. And it would just do it automatically, literally just press one button and it produces everything. Now, various companies have come up with things that are similar in the meantime. And one of the most um, interesting ones that I found is this one called, I want to call it Nout, 
uh, but it's probably no T or something like that. Um, it's a, another free tool and it's not specifically for teachers as such, it's really for the students working through their own notes. So if I log in with a login that I had created earlier, log back into your account, log in, use a suggested, no, oh, let's sign in with Google. Let's let, will it let me sign in with Google? Yes, it will. It will. It's thinking about it. Right. So with this, um, you, you've got an app on your phone as well that you can put in and it synchronizes. Oh, look at that. I did do this in Google before. It's, so the students have access to this. They can get it onto their phones. They can get it onto a desktop, whatever it is. They're creating a teacher version to create teacher kind of content as well. But basically what you do is you take your notes or you could write your notes in here. You take your notes, you put it into the system and it generates a self-assessment for you to kind of review your understanding of whatever the content is. Now it'll take, um, you can import a note by just lifting it from your Google Drive, lifting it from your computer. Um, so any Word doc or PowerPoint or whatever you want, um, or you can give it a web page. So if, if we go to, oh, let's just go to a Wikipedia page then. Um, Sometimes it works out really well. Uh, you can use BBC pages as well if you want an article. Uh, th think of a topic. Um, I feel, John, you didn't get to play before. Uh, think, think of an exciting topic for me. What, okay. What's... Um, Zoom. 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 I, I was hoping for some like special insight into your, your background. Uh, I thought you might just under pressure come out with some bizarre topic area. So let's see. Uh, Zoom. I'm going to choose one. I'm going to choose Zoom. The 2006 film by Tim Allen. I have no idea what that's about. Um, right, okay. So if I go back to... Uh, wait, right. Um, I'm just going to give it a page. There we go. Let's see. Importing the notes. So it brings all the text. It lifts all the text, not the images, uh, from that Wikipedia page and throws it into the software. And inside this note then, if we call it, uh, well, let's say Zoom, uh, I'm going to say John's, uh, oh, oh, John's, oh, look, favorite. I was going to put it in brackets afterwards, but that didn't work out. Zoom. Um, right. <clears throat> from here, I can generate a quiz just from the text that's been lifted in. Now, the text isn't always perfect because it includes any text that appears on the screen. So sometimes when I was lifting in like BBC news articles, it would also pull in like the top 10 stories also. So you, you had to delete bits of it, but it's really designed for if you write your own notes, if you're writing notes for um, lectures, if you're writing notes uh, about a course that you're studying, it can produce a quick assessment for you. So if I click on quiz here, it gets my quiz ready, it lifts, it tries to work out what are the important points within that text and it generates uh, a random quiz for you. You can approve or disapprove um, of question sets and you can save question sets for further review. So in this case, John's favorite file, file? Oh, film, file, oh. Zoom, also known as Zoom Academy for Superheroes. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, uh, now I want to watch it. No, don't have time. Um, produced by Columbia Pictures and, oh, and, and who, who created the film, John? This favorite film of yours? Um, I'm, oh, none of the above. Oh, oh, I feel John would have liked Santa Studios. Oh, duh, and the correct answer. So, so, oh, okay, uh, other things. Oh, match the following terms. Oh, bangles. Bangles keep trying to escape. Dylan keeps trying to, Dylan probably keeps, oh, no, Dylan, Dylan keeps, no, I don't know. General Larrabee, Dylan finds himself, oh, no. Um, well, okay, so you get the idea. It's, it, it's kind of a matching thing. Uh, 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 slidey thing, slidey thing. I could see how I just get distracted by this. Um, press enter to submit. <gasps> Oh, and I thought my random guess would have been so correct. Um, <clears throat> as you go on, you can approve or disapprove. If you get like a, a question that makes no sense whatsoever, you can uh, say it's a poor question and then it won't be repeated and it won't be shown to you again. And once you go through the question set, you've essentially got a set of self-reviewed questions that you can use again and again for that piece of text. So I was thinking if you're a student and you're building up notes on a course and you just really want to check your understanding, it's the kind of thing I would have done um, when I was, at, well, I used flashcards before when I was trying to memorize sort of certain terms and I'd create a whole bunch of 
flashcards on a key ring and I just when I was on a bus or whatever I'd flick through them and ask myself questions um, honestly I just wanted to buy the flip card on a key ring thing I wasn't really a very studious student I just it, it looked very cool and I, I just wanted to play with it but this is like a free tool which you can do and you can use uh, on your phone so it, everything that you do on this synchronizes on the phone um, I'm not staring uh, at my phone but it, it basically the the same question set comes up here um, and when you see it you can you can basically just once you've created it um oh john's favorite file zoom so i've got my my quiz here john's favorite file i know you can't really see it i should really find a way to to, to share this um it creates a quiz for me on the phone and i can i can play the same quiz uh, and do all of the questions on here so it's a it's a brilliant idea as a, a self-revision tool for students who are creating notes um, and I, I believe the company wants to make a version that's available for teachers to get them to create materials to deliver for students um, how good is that how will it work out I have no idea but having played around with it it's worth a go I, I think if I was a student <laughs> and I, I wanted a way to review my notes or even my teacher notes because you can drop like PowerPoints in it as well. And if, you're, if your lecturer is of creating slides and notes and you just want to review your understanding, you can drop a PowerPoint and it, it produce a quiz automatically. It's just, it's just a really interesting tool. So I like it. Now, um, what happened to my previous, let's see, uh, what was the video puppet? Are we there? Oh, look at that. Oh! What timing? So video puppet, uh, once you've created your video, and remember, I haven't logged in yet. It's just, it's just created the video for me. I can download that file as uh, an MP3 or an MP4. So if I, uh, look at that, this is my, if I save it, result, result. Oh, so right, uh, this is going to take a while to, to come up. Uh, right. Oh, it's worked, right. So I have to stop sharing for a second and reshare so that I can stream the audio from my sharing to you. So I'm gonna stop, put you back into a gallery. Oh, it's so fast today. Look, we're just skipping from thing to thing to thing. Um, let's see, advanced sharing options. Uh, let's see, I want, to, I want to show, I want to give you the option to share my computer sound. Yes, other people will hear me. You, you'll hear all the weird stuff that I play on my computer. Um, right, uh, it's sharing my screen. Let's see, there's the file. You'll have Don't to- Don't blame me for the slide template. They make me use this template with your face. Okay, here's the description of the session taken from the program. Going digital, I started out as an ESOL teacher with the idea that digital tools would enhance the experience of learning and teaching. I sound now, better, I'll be Elizabeth. the first to admit that my journey I'm... hasn't been without its bumps and bruises, but even after all these years, I'm still convinced that there's technology out there that really does make a positive difference. So, if you have the time to spare, I'd like to share with you some of the approaches I've used and latterly learned about while working for JISC and now CDN. All you need to participate is a phone and open-ish asterisk mind. <laughs> Asterisk, I didn't say I was a good ESOL teacher. You can't believe the number of times my fellow teachers used to correct my emails. Still, I defend the principle that the English language is flexible and gives people like me the license to play around with spelling and grammar. I know, there's way too much text I, on this sorry. slide. I just think it's this so is cool. mostly just... about the legal moves so in France to ban phones right. from school. So basically, it's just reading off, off the text there. But it's it, like the, the voice quality, it's like a sappy five voice, is, is awesome. It, like it's really good. I sound brilliant as Elizabeth. I'm really, well, why would I, why would I want to be anything else other than Elizabeth um, from this point forward? I'm going to be really disappointed by my own voice now. Um, <clears throat> so video puppet really simple service, really quick way to produce a video using someone else's voice and to read out notes and pass it on to students. Now, I said, please don't use this, um, you know, because we all want to listen to you, to you, the lecturers, the students want to listen to you, you have you talk to them. So don't, don't use a service like this, you speak to them because you know, we love you and we want to hear from you. <laughs> and so do your students. Right, um, time pressing on. So. Next thing I'm going to talk about. So this is the, the your math teacher is a genius thing. So your math teacher is a genius. I, I just had to say that twice. In Finland, this guy, oh, I'm going to forget his name. What's his name? Is it Stephen? Oh, that's so bad because this is a recording and uh, you'll remember that. I forgot this guy's name, the genius. Um, so in Finland, there was this project where a guy created a 
bunch of tools to support mathematics. Um, like it's brilliant. Um, and he, he produced it in, in obviously three languages. Uh, do I, can I log into it here? I, I won't play the video or anything, but basically MathFi is, was a whole series of mathematical sort of content, quizzes, assessment that was freely available and supported um, that nation's delivery of mathematics um, into schools. Um, and when, they, so they're talking about um, junior high, which is the thing in Japan, not so much here. Uh, so what up to third year, so primary school to third year, uh, all the content was designed for that. It's, it's the kind of, it's probably similar to kind of scholar, I suppose, uh, in some sense, um, probably at the lower levels, but it's, it's just a lot of um, teaching uh, tools and assessment that you can build into it. That's not the cool part though. They, they also, in order to deliver this, they built some really interesting tools. It's all free. It's all supported by donation and, and national grants and stuff like that. The content of the maths itself, if you're interested in it, is, is worth taking a look. Um, the way that it sort of um, goes through steps and explaining working out and uh, the video and the content and the quizzes, really awesome. It's, it's a really nice piece of work. But as a kind of sidestep, the guy who's making it, he developed this additional tool called uh, Whiteboard. Now you might have seen this. So white, whiteboard.fi, the FI sort of gives it away that it's uh, finished. Um, this, now, if you've not seen whiteboard, this is a kind of thing where it's like those old classroom management tools, where if you were in a computer lab, like the teacher had uh, a computer, but they could see everyone else's screen. And then when people are doing work, basically when, when I was younger, um, 10 years ago, it was a tool to stop people using Bebo uh, and, and MySpace. <laughs> But um, it's been adapted. This, the same sort of idea and technology is where you give everybody the opportunity to feed in and write into a synchronous kind of course. So if I do that, again, it's completely free. Um, it's backed by this big service. So let's see, if I do uh, my name, um, there's some security things like you can let students upload their own images if you want to. It's, it, it's completely secure. It forgets every instance once the uh, session is finished. It doesn't record any data. Um, it's very GDPR compliant. Um, you can set up this for simple mode for students, allows it to work with very low bandwidth and cuts down on the ability to um, but automatically save uh, answers and things like that. Um, so it, it it works in really poor Wi-Fi connections. I tested it out in the garden uh, just to see what it was going to be like. Um, so it's a really nice system. Um, so basically, so this is the, the class that started up. And if you really want to, if you desperately want to, you, you can go to basically this uh, URL. You share it out with your students and everyone then gets their own little whiteboard. Um, now I have a, a, a class whiteboard. So let me see if I have a class whiteboard here and it just gives me a tool to write stuff on it. Um, so uh, I, what, what will I write? Uh, I love, and this is revealing too much. Uh, what's her name? Elsabeth. Els, Els, Elsabeth. Was that, was that the name of the voice? Um, okay. So the way that they use it in the class is and, and so everybody can then see this on their own screen if they've joined the link. Now the room code is D328. So if I go to my phone, I should have totally set this up before. Um, so I've got uh, a phone and it has, it's asking me, well, it's asking me for my room code. So I'm going to put in the room code. Uh, if you went to whiteboard.fi, you would get the same thing. Whiteboard code is D3498. And I will join the whiteboard class. And my name is, oh, I'm just going to call myself, oh, Ilsa. That's what I should do, right. So now my class, uh, when it logs in, there's Ilsa come in. So everybody in the class, if you had like eight students, you would see all of their boards come up on your screen. And if I said to Ilsa, if I gave her, oh, oh, Elaine, oh, sorry. Shouldn't be so excited by him. Um, <coughs> in my whiteboard, typically what this uh, teacher does is uh, the way that they do it is they set up a question like, you, you know, X plus uh, 13 equals, oh, I don't know, 20. And then it asks, you would ask all the students, well, how, what's, what's X? Um, and what then 
the individual students would do is they could show their working. What I even forgot my oh ex how Elaine beat me to it. Um, I was going to I was going to do something else, but um, x equals oh, what what was the question? Um, plus thirteen equals twenty is oh, oh yes, but you could get students to show their working. Um, seven. Elaine, you're so good. My goodness, you're going to the top of the class. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's, it's a really interesting way to quickly get students to interact, do things together on screen at the same time. Um, and it's, it is like that classroom management tool and it just works. And, and the fact that it's nationally backed by this big project means it's probably going to be around for a while. Like the guy who developed it, I'm gonna call him Stephen again, it's not his name, um, is, has been developing these tools and they're releasing bits and pieces for free. It's kind of like the H5P, which is a free set of tools that were developed in Norway. Um, and it's working along the same sort of principles about having a lot of government funding, um, having a lot of um, institutions, corporations sort of fund these projects and making education free for the world and, and, and their local countries. It's such a cool tool though. Um, it's so good that um, I, I, I think if I were delivering online and it's math and I wanted my students to sort of um, play around with it and you know show working. Now the screen isn't huge so it's a much better experience. Hi, Svetlana. <laughs> if, it's a much better experience if, you, if you're using a tablet, for example, so that you've got more space to write with on, on your finger. But it's a good way to show working for math. It's a really interesting way to quickly share. Um, it's just such a nice tool. This absolutely is my favorite tool of, of all the ones I've shown you today. Um, of course, um, you know, I, again, Please don't use the presentation tool. Your voice is much more lovely than, than an automated Elizabeth or, or Charles voice, um, but it is fun to play with. And the, the assessment thing is kind of interesting. It's more for your students than for you, but it's, it's definitely worth investigating. And that pretty much is my presentation. The three tools that you should have a look at, things to try on a Thursday is, uh, first of all, Video Puppet, free service. You don't need to log in, up to 20 slides, go in, automate uh, a narrated slide show, uh, spits it out as an MP4. Uh, the second thing, Note, Nout, no T, whatever it's called, uh, a note building tool that creates self-assessment for your students. Um, works really well really simple um, and, and a good revision tool. And finally, this whiteboard.fi, which is a brilliant synchronous tool that you could, use. it will suit certain situations, not everybody's teaching style, but it's definitely, if it fits your style, this is a cool tool um, and they're all free. Uh, and that is is the end uh, of my presentation. Unless somebody has like a really interesting question to ask. Thank you, Kenji. We do have uh, a few questions. Um, Kath got hers in first. Kath, would you like to uh, unmute and ask it if you <laughs> can? Thank you. Hi. Yes. Not uh, the naughty hi, note. Hi. Thanks. Um, I was just wondering if there's any way for us to create these quizzes as lecturers and then to save the link to them and share the link maybe in our own VLE or something. Do you think that's possible? So yeah, so this is the, the teacher format. So so now T have announced um, in I think in the last month that they're going to develop a, a, a teacher platform and you can apply using your institutional email address. Um, it's mostly targeted at schools. So it's asking for people to come in with their school's email access and uh, join their beta program to show you what the teacher platform looks like. Um, so I've applied. Uh, they haven't let me in yet. I don't know why. It's, I have such a trusting face. I feel that they should let me in. But uh, you can apply and they'll give you access to the school's platform and the teacher platform for you to test out how to generate content and then share a link with your, your students to try the quizzes uh, for themselves. So it, it's exactly what you describe, um, but it's, it's in beta. So you can apply to see it and try it out for yourself uh, and it will be fully released in, in the next couple of months, I think. Thank you. Thank you. But, yeah, a question from Lisa around video puppets. Uh, Lisa, would you care to ask it? Hi there. Uh, just wondering how good um, of terminology, so anatomy and things like that, do they pronounce, like if we're using puppet, can it pronounce the words pretty well or? Is she a bit like study where they get mixed up with terminology and it sounds all wrong? <laughs> so um, all of the wording on the PowerPoint slides that I used and in, in the words that I typed in, I started off with a thousand words and I listened to every single word and the, the captioning that came up and it was spot on. 
um, which was interesting. And then as a further test, I did it in Japanese as well. Um, and and it, was, it was pretty much perfect. Uh, there, there was nothing wrong with it. So it's working from a simple text to speech. So it's not like it's trying to listen to your voice and work out what you're saying. So it's not like the captioning you get in, in PowerPoint or YouTube or whatever. The accuracy is much higher than that. Text to speech being a, a, a simpler sort of um, function uh, to perform on a computer. So I wouldn't say that it's 100% perfect. So if you have a medical term, um, if you have a particularly complicated term, then the pronunciation is is sometimes slightly off. But for the wording that I used, um, and I used big words too, um, I'm, I had to look them up, obviously, um, but I used big words in my presentation and it handled it really, really well. Um, so I, I was pretty much impressed. It's probably not as good as Dragon Dictate or, or one of those kind of tools, um, but it's, it is pretty good. Perfect. And finally, one more question. Uh, Fraser, are you able to join us and ask your question? Hi, yes. Can I, ask, can I actually ask two questions, please? Oh. <clears throat> First is, um, you, you drew the, the, the text in from uh, Wikipedia. Can you draw it in from anywhere? I kind of missed that. Something happened yep. in the background. I take Sorry. it you can easily take it in from a Word document. Yep, yep. You can, you can actually upload files. Um, so you can use... Um, uh, PowerPoint files, you can use Word files, uh, you can use a link to anywhere on the web that features text. Uh, so I was testing it out with BBC articles, I was testing from uh, newspapers, uh, I was testing uh, from uh, a film review site that I, I saw. Uh, they all work. The only issue with it sometimes is when you pull it in from the BBC site, it pulls all the extra text that appears on the page. So uh -huh. it, you know you don't sometimes only get the the article text. So in those cases, what you really need to do is just copy and paste the text into a notepad file, or, or you can tidy it up and then upload it. Or you can, once you've imported it into now, you can delete the parts that are, are unnecessary. But it's, yeah, it's, it's really flexible. It works with so many formats. It's excellent, it looks really, really good. Brings me to my second question. I thought today's presentation was absolutely wonderful. And I've, I'm a team leader. I would like all my team to see this. How, how can we access this? So we do, we record everything. Uh, we make them all available um, on YouTube. Uh, I, I've got everybody's email address. So I'll, I'll send you the link as soon as it's up. Thank um, you. I'll probably do it later today. Um, but yeah, uh, but just to say these tools, like some of them are free, some of them just recently appeared. Like they give you an insight of what's to come. The whiteboard.fi is definitely going to be around for a while because of the nature of the project. The, the things like Nout, it probably will exist. Will it exist a year from now? I don't know. Um, these and, and video puppet that it's, it's an amazing service for something that's free that doesn't doesn't force you to register that just go onto the site fire in your your powerpoint and come out with the content that's stunning and most people don't need more than 20 slides um it's a fantastic resource how long will that exist i i don't know but it is interesting to see these kind of things exist um and ha have a quick play with them and some of them might be useful some of them might not be um again you know Record your own presentations. Speak yourself. People love you. People love you. And plenty of tools to experiment with. Uh, um, now we've come to a half an hour. I've put up the link um, to the VB, uh, the Virtual Bridge Sessions page and program. And Fraser and for others, that contains the links to the YouTube recordings of all the previous sessions and will be updated um, as we go uh, with that. Um, and it's a special um, hello to. Uh, uh, to Alexis and Oliver, Oliver, that's uh, good to see you. And um, yeah, with that, uh, we'll bring the formal concluding in the recording to an end. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you.